Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to The Everyday Investor, the hottest real estate investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. We've got a fantastic show lined up. My good friend Ray Ostrander is here from the Ray Ostrander Group. We're going to be talking about something a little different. We are going to talk strategy, and we are going to go through those, uh, those questions that we ask whenever we're introduced with an investment vehicle. What's the return on investment? When do I get it? What's minimum amount needed? What's the risk? We're going to talk about that, but we're going to focus a lot on common mistakes that investors make, whether you're a veteran, whether you're um, you know, a beginner. We all can get better at what we do, and so I'm really looking forward to talking to Ray about that. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Everyday Investor has been brought to you by ProFunds Mortgages, Fixed Returns, Real Security. The Real Estate Centre Canada, for all your buying, selling and investing needs. Exteriors, providing you with full service exterior renovations. For over 10 years, Strong Based Interlock and Landscaping has providing professional services to homeowners across the Greater Toronto Area. We are dedicated to ensuring your landscaping resembles the beauty you have envisioned. Our team guarantees competitive prices and the highest level of customer satisfaction through our integrity and commitment to quality landscaping services. For a free estimate on your next project, call us at 416-800-1585 or visit our website at sbinterlock.com. Whatever your interlocking and landscaping needs, you can count on Strong base at here to clean we understand that inviting someone into your home is a big deal all of our cleaners are carefully vetted to ensure we send the right person to care for your home we offer a variety of cleaning services to meet our various clients needs from small office and vacation rental cleaning post renovation and move-in cleaning we will arrange a team of professionals with the right skill sets to tackle your toughest jobs and get them done right email call or text us to discuss your unique needs hey there this is anthony maniacci here at maniacci sobel altbaum we're a law firm working for you in all facets of the law my specialty is working in corporate commercial law and real estate but we have lawyers that work in all other areas including litigation and family our practice focuses on service with a personal touch delivering in-depth legal advice and guidance to our clients treating you as people not as a number you can reach us at maniachilaw.com. Hey, it's Jeff and Mark from Exteriors. Exteriors provides you with full service exterior renovations, including roofing, siding, aluminum, and eaves troughs. We treat every renovation as if it were our own, guaranteeing impeccable craftsmanship. Exteriors Renovations, contact us for a free quote. At High Peaks Custom Homes, we understand that your family is unique and your home should be too. We are dedicated to understanding your vision and bringing it to life with great attention to detail and expert craftsmanship. Contact us at High Peaks Custom Homes to speak with our design team and start your new home. Canadian Real Estate Wealth, Canada's leading authority on residential real estate investment, can help you grow your portfolio, build equity, and find the perfect market for your next investment property. Available both online and in print, Canadian Real Estate Wealth is written by investors for investors. Each issue brings proven, practical advice on all aspects of your investor's journey. Property management, financing, alternative investing, and so much more. In 2018, when you think ROI, think CREW. Visit CanadianRealEstateMagazine.ca to subscribe today. The Real Estate Center is one of North America's leading real estate firms, helping everyday people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. By leading with education, we make sure our clients have the know-how and confidence to make informed decisions, allowing them to reach their goals. Through our vast network of experienced advisors, the Real Estate Center is able to provide a full-service experience across the entire country. Whether you're looking for your first home, an income property, or commercial investment, we're here to help. Visit our website at therealestatecenter.com. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. I'm here with my good friend, Ray Ostrander. Ray, uh, with an E at the end, R-A-E. It's true. It's uh, great to have you on the show. Yeah, you as well. I, uh, I thought, uh, you know, lots of viewers are like, hey, Rav, we need some more bald heads on the show. And so I said, who do I know that's a great investor with a bald head? And so yeah, yeah. here you are. You were able to accommodate. Uh, no, just, uh, just kidding. Um, Ray, thanks so much for being a great friend of mine um, and even a, a, a mentor. I mean, you... You do that for, for many people, and uh, I appreciate that in the real estate world, but even just life. We talk life a lot. Um, you know, you got some beautiful girls, and you love spending time with your, uh, your family. Let's, before we jump into um, something that uh, 
you know, you're, you're very well versed in investing in real estate and going through helping people not to make mistakes that they make. Why do you do this? What, what's the why for Ray in this investment game? How did you get started? All that kind of good stuff. You know, I got started years ago. You know, I did my undergraduate work in religion and philosophy, got a master's in theology and was working in churches a little bit. And I, I found that I loved doing that, uh, but pay was kind of bad, <laughs> as you can relate to. That's right. Um, so what I had to do is figure something else out. So primarily I started this as a means to be able to generate a bit more income for myself, so I had options. And yeah. eventually it kind of just morphed and took over. Uh, once you start getting good returns, I think you find that other people kind of want to get involved in that a little bit, and there's also opportunities to teach and train, and I kind of got up and did those kind of things as well. So I mainly just got started probably 20 years ago now. Uh, when we talk about even the, the returns, what are kind of the, I mean, when you're getting into this investment game, for somebody like you or the people that you help uh, and mentor through the Ray Ostrander Group, um, we're not looking at returns like, I mean, you can get 3 4 5% here and there, but what are you kind of, uh, on a conservative level, what do you like to see when you're going to get involved in an investment? Yeah, so for me, if I'm looking at returns, it sounds crazy to say this, but I mean, you're looking at trying to make 30 plus percent returns. Annual. Yeah, now that's taking into consideration some of the um, speculative elements. Like if we're looking for growth on a property and we're expecting sort of 3 to 5% growth, yeah. we want to have conservative projections, but uh, cash flow on, on its own, I'd like to see it around 10% if possible. Yeah. For the Just cash for the on, cash flow. Cash on for, cash, for, yeah. For, for, for passive income. And so um, tell me about the journey now into real estate. I mean, what, what, where did you start? How did you get from, you know, your own properties to then, you know, creating a fund for people and getting into bigger things? I mean, we're, we're talking now, um, you know, a few million dollars for... Uh, for apartment buildings, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. this is the kind of stuff you're into. How did you do that? I mean, you know, the show's the everyday investor, and I know you consider yourself an everyday uh, type of guy, but not every person can get into, you know, apartment buildings and, and so on and so forth. How did you get started, and how did it evolve? I, I think everyone can do it, if they want to. I mean, there's a certain amount of work involved, and, you know, you gotta figure out the game a little bit and, and get some training and some support, but that's what I had. I had a great mentor. Mike Wilson was my mentor. And uh, he gave me a lot of help getting started with that. But I started with it, just a six unit building, you know, small buildings, some seller financing. That's what you started with? Yeah. You started with a six. See, here's the thing. I started with six. Most people would think that starting with one would be easier. Yes. But I had no credit. I had no money. So I had to go and buy something. My, here are my options. I was in Woodbridge. Yeah. Working as a pastor. And I'm saying, I need to buy a house. Yeah. So I gotta go buy a half million dollar house? I couldn't even think about a half million dollar house back then. Yeah. So. I say I can buy a half million dollar house or I can buy a $250,000 six unit building in Gravenhurst. And, and one thing that, that I want you to mention because you just said you, know, you didn't have credit to buy the single property. So talk about yeah. why somebody um, can buy a sixplex and not a, one, uh, you know, a single family dwelling. When I'm qualifying for financing, you, know, you're, you need to show income. How, how are you gonna be able to pay the mortgage? And the, whoever's lending you the money wants to know what your ability to pay is. So, um, on a property like a $250,000 property in Gravenhurst that has, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood at the time, probably $3,500 in income coming in every month. Yeah. That's more than enough coverage that banks are going to feel comfortable with that. And in this case, the seller felt very comfortable with it. Yeah. So that was very easy to cover. Whereas if you looked at that property in Woodbridge, yeah. you paid half a million dollars for it. Yeah. Maybe the rent that you could generate on that at the time yeah. would have only been $1,500. Yeah. No, but it's very interesting, and I think, I think the viewers are already enlightened by what you just said. So let's forget about Woodbridge. Yep. If we have a single dwelling in Gravenhurst, yep. and we have a sixplex in Gravenhurst, the lender looks at it two different ways. The, the single family home, yeah, they're looking at your personal you're looking at Ray, yeah. whereas the sixplex, they're, they're looking at the income that's coming in, so they'd gladly give you the money for that, but not for the $250,000 single. And I think, I mean, that's, that's, people need to know that. It is easier, and, and then over the years, I mean, I bought some more smaller properties, some fourplexes and triplexes, and then started buying, you know, 20 and 30 unit buildings, and today we're looking at, you know, we were talking about one earlier today, is 400 units, so, yeah. I mean, it really is scalable. The one thing you are gonna need, not to make it sound so easy, if you wanna buy a significant sized asset, they're not just looking at the income, they are gonna look at my ability to guarantee that. You know, what do I have invested in this? What could I lose if things don't go well? Yeah. Um, and when I started, I didn't have those things. So I took on partners. 
I mean, I'm very grateful to people that uh, worked with me from the beginning. I think they're pretty happy. You know, people were making 20 or 30 percent annual returns. I mean, that's nothing to nothing yeah. to be too upset about. That's right. And I think I think that's a great word, partnerships and and you know um, relationships when it gets into this because very few people who's buy, you know that are buying a a 400 unit building. There's not one person buying that. You, it's rare. You, very rare. Yeah. You always are doing this with with different partners, creating a fund like you did, and everybody gets to enjoy. Um, the returns on that. Yeah. You know, um, so what are some of the things, you know, Ray, I mean, you, you um, when we sat down before and we said, what, what do you want to talk about? I know you just want to, you know, grab people and just shake them because, listen, why do you make these mistakes? Um, let's talk about that, um, you know, the, the mistakes that, whether you're a veteran or beginner, yeah. that investors can make, you know? Let's, let's talk about a few of those. I think, you know, on the training side of what I do and some of the individual mentoring, the biggest challenge that I have to overcome constantly, there's two major challenges. One really is people's understanding of the value of real estate. People don't, I think, understand when they're speculating. So I talk about it in terms of intrinsic value, and then you're looking at you know buying properties for other reasons, and a lot yeah. of it's emotional. You know, be... But but define speculate then. Yeah. So this is the challenge. I think people think, oh, if I can go out and buy a property in Etobicoke for eight hundred thousand dollars and rent it out, that's a good business model. Well, I think when you break down the numbers, you find out really quickly that that property doesn't give you a positive cash flow. Yeah, you'll be out of pocket every month. Yeah. Because the expenses of mortgage and taxes and so on and so forth. Um, is going to be greater than the rent that's coming in. Yeah. Now people say, but Ray, this is a great income producing property. My realtor told me so or whatever. No. I mean, is it a great income producing property? If you're negative cash flow at the end of the year, you're speculating. Yeah. You are, you're the reason why you up? say speculating yeah. is because they're speculating that it will increase in value. Yes. Okay. And now you could pay down the mortgage over time as well. So you can factor all that in. Yeah. But if when you're buying a business, I mean, people always look at Warren Buffett as a, as a, as a genius, you know, buy low, sell high. I think they forget when he's buying low and he's buying stocks, he's buying stocks that, that have earnings that make sense. Yeah. Does this company make money every year? Because yeah. if it doesn't, what's the intrinsic value of any asset? Yeah. I think it's what you can get. So what I hear you saying, just to really break it down, is we've got a, an expensive condo downtown Toronto. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to buy that condo and they're going to rent it out. Yeah. They're going to be out of pocket a couple hundred dollars a month because the value of the condo for mortgage and so on and so forth, it's gonna be greater than what the, the, the rent is, depending yeah. on how much they put down. Um, and so they're gonna be out of pocket, but Ray, don't worry, because this condo downtown is going to increase in value. I hear you saying, okay, but as long as you know, investor, that you are speculating, yeah. that that's not, that's not sound investing, you can do it, and people have made money, but as long as you're willing to go for that gamble, if you will. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it's as speculative, for instance, as, as equities, you know, where the value of a stock could go to zero. I think it's less volatile when you're in real estate. Yeah. I think there's a much longer uh, time frame that you are going to be correct long term. I have yeah. no question the value of property in Toronto is going to go up over the next 20 years. Yeah. You are going to have to weather a storm here or there, yeah. potentially. I mean, I've been saying this for a while, and we're seeing a little bit of that right now. We're seeing some significant softening in price points, yeah. and, and I think that's healthy. Yeah. So, you know, where you get into these things, if you're not aware that you're speculating, that's probably the biggest problem is many people aren't even aware that they're speculating. Yeah. They don't even know what it means. And no. basically what it means is that you're going for the inflation. Inflation is speculation is really what I hear you saying. Listen, Ray, uh, we can take a quick break, but I love having you on the show. I love talking to you about real estate. Uh, you don't want to miss the show. We're going to continue to talk to Ray Ostrander about the mistakes that we can make as investors in real estate. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The Everyday Investor has been brought to you by ProFunds Mortgages, Fixed Returns, Real Security. The Real Estate Centre Canada, for all your buying, selling and investing needs. Exteriors, providing you with full service exterior renovations. Canadian Real Estate Wealth, Canada's leading authority on residential real estate investment, can help you grow your portfolio, build equity, and find the perfect market for your next investment property. Available both online and in print. Canadian Real Estate Wealth is written by investors for investors. Each issue brings proven practical advice on all aspects of your investor's journey. Property management, financing, alternative investing, and so much more. In 2018, when you think ROI, think CREW. Visit CanadianRealEstateMagazine.ca to subscribe today. ProFunds Mortgages and its affiliate Valor Capital offers expert service and funding solutions for builders and developers. Offering first and second mortgages with a combination of institutional and private lending. 
ProFunds Mortgages and Valor Capital offer a full-service construction and development package with in-house engineers, developers, builders, planners, and the best of financial analysts. With the many years of experience and credibility, ProFunds and Valor would love to be your added value financial partner. Visit us at profunds.ca. Hey, it's Jeff and Mark from Exteriors. Exteriors provides you with full-service exterior renovations, including roofing, siding, aluminum, and eaves troughs. We treat every renovation as if it were our own, guaranteeing impeccable craftsmanship. Exteriors Renovations. Contact us for a free quote. At High Peaks Custom Homes, we understand that your family is unique, and your home should be too. We are dedicated to understanding your vision and bringing it to life with great attention to detail and expert craftsmanship. Contact us at High Peaks Custom Homes to speak with our design team and start your new home. For over 10 years, Strong Based Interlock and Landscaping has providing professional services to homeowners across the greater Toronto area. We are dedicated to ensuring your landscaping resembles the beauty you have envisioned. Our team guarantees competitive prices and the highest level of customer satisfaction through our integrity and commitment to quality landscaping services. For a free estimate on your next project, call us at 416-800-1585 or visit our website at sbinterlock.com. Whatever your interlocking and landscaping needs, you can count on Strong base like people businesses have their journey their path sometimes straight but more often evolving growing and adapting and like people businesses needs change creating the need for knowledge in areas like accounting consulting and tax areas critical to your continued growth and success all part of the journey and all part of what we do together with you so that when your business has arrived it's ready to keep going MNP wherever business takes you. Hey, it's Vitaly, Rav's door and window guy. Here are four quick tips when choosing doors and windows for your home. One, get two to three estimates from a reputable vendor. Two, choose the right manufacturer. Three, make sure you have a warranty. And four, get professional installation. To book a free estimate, contact us at torontodoorsandwindows.ca. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. I'm talking to my good friend Ray from the Ray Ostrander Group. We're talking about common mistakes that investors make. We're also going to uh, take a look at uh, the returns that one can make investing in different types of projects. I think we're going to look at an apartment building here in just a few minutes. But uh, Ray, it's great to uh, have you on the show. I love having you because I do know you do some coaching and mentoring and you've seen a lot and, and done a lot as young as you look. Um, we're talking about common mistakes that investors can make, whether, yeah. whether they're beginner or veteran. And I think one of the things that you would like people to just own up to, um, if you're going to speculate, at least know you're speculating. Yeah, a sure. lot of people, you know, bank on inflation as opposed to cash flow, as opposed to, um, you know, debt reduction on mortgage. Uh, they, they, they invest because they want the property to go up in value, which is um, what we both agreed to as being gravy, if you will. Um, it's not the reason why you should buy real estate is what I heard you say. Yeah, for me. Yeah. I, I don't want to speculate. You know, yeah. A lot of my friends and family that do investing with us, they're in there, you know, between 55 and 70 years old. They don't have the runway to speculate. Yeah. They want income every month. Yeah. So I'm a little bit more conservative. I think speculating is a great way to invest. And I think you've got lots of vehicles. We have friends who, are, who do a lot of great stuff in the speculation yeah. space. Um, but that's but, just not me. But what I appreciate you saying is, if, if you're going to bank on inflation, at least understand that you're speculating. Well, and understand the risk. I mean, this is the thing that I think a lot of people miss, is if you put 20% down on a property, and the value, and it doesn't cash flow, it doesn't make you any money at all, yeah. you're gonna pay taxes at the end of the year on the income that you received, even though someone went to principal. So you're gonna be out of pocket even more than you realize. And so you're paying for this, and at the end of the year, if we saw a 15% drop in property values, does that equate to losing 75% of your equity that you put in? Like we just need to know, what are you risking? Are you risking 75% of your equity yeah. to be able to get 5 to 6% returns annually? I think people are a little bit unaware of that. So if yeah. you're going to do it, know what you're doing. Yeah, we have to be humble. We don't, we don't, I mean, we can have lots of fundamental factors, but we don't have a crystal ball at the end of the day. Nobody knows Nobody what's going to happen. You know, um, it's not about uh, buying lowest and selling highest. Moreover, uh, when know? I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing, the investors that are working with me, and this would be a horrible sales pitch, but I will tell people, look, I believe that if we're purchasing today in this property, and it's, it gives us a 7.5% a cap rate, a good, a good overall return if it's managed properly, I believe the value of the property could drop. Yeah. But isn't that just being prepared? So can we weather the storm through a short-term drop in the market, 
yeah, if you've got substantial cash flow and you're getting a 10% return, my investors don't even care. I mean, if we've got cash flow, the value of the property today, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, like I say, you know, somebody once taught me, um, it's not about selling, I mean, buying lowest and selling highest. Yeah, buy low, sell high, but it's sure. don't, don't gamble. Nobody can time, you know, this, this market. Okay, so that's number one. Yep. Uh, don't speculate. Uh, let's look at one other one before we get into some numbers about sure. uh, returns. What's another, what's one of the other biggest things uh, that people make uh, a mistake in? I think a lot of people just don't get all the numbers when they're doing their analysis. Um, they'll look at the taxes, insurance, you know, the utilities, and they're not really looking at some basic things. The co most common things that people miss is they don't account for vacancy. Why? Why do you need vacancy? We're never vacant. Well, yeah, you are. When you turn over a unit, what, did you move someone out and they moved in right away? <laughs> you know, if you're going to go in and clean and paint the place, yeah. I think you should do that for all your tenants. We treat our tenants like they're valuable customers. We want right. to give it to them the way we want to see it back. It yeah. doesn't very often happen that way. Yeah. But, you know, there's some time. And if you have a 15-day turn, which would be a potentially a long term, you've still got some vacancy. So you gotta account for vacancy. Yeah. Then you've also got- And there's different formulas that you create to be able to, to account for that because someone's gonna- you know, Different markets, right? Different markets, you yep. have a different percentage that you would use for vacancy, yeah. okay? Like I'm always considering at least 5% vacancy. You know, if you get 95% physical occupancy on a property, that's fantastic. And if you can get that higher, we get our stuff up to 97, 98. But how about we bank on 95? Yeah. You know, we need to know how much cash we're going to have at the end of the month to be able to pay in, everything that's got to be In all vehicles, but especially when it comes to multi, especially when it comes to apartment buildings, so on and so forth. For right? sure. I think it's even more of a concern for people who have singles yeah. and duplexes. Yeah. Because if you have a turnover one month, you're losing either all of your income or half of it. So there's a good part about multis is they can really diversify some of your risk and smooth out some of those, uh, those cash uh, tight situations. Yeah. But So that's one. The second thing is property management. The biggest challenge is a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'll manage this thing myself. Sure, you can manage it yourself. If you're managing yourself and you live in Toronto, are you better off to purchase a property in a secondary market where you're getting much better cash flow even paying somebody? Yeah. Probably. And then how do we select a good property management company? Yeah, I mean, I'm smiling because uh, isn't it just so coincidental that the best market in this country is the one that's in your own backyard? You know, I'm joking a little bit, right? Yeah, because everyone feels that everyone's investing in their own backyard. Well, yeah. it's not the best place, but doing it the way you're talking about, if we have management in place, yeah. wherever the, the, the best area is to invest, um, even in North America, even really, frankly, around the world, perhaps, yeah. um, as long as you have people in place, we treat this as a business as opposed to, oh, okay, there's a house for sale down the street. I'm sure that would be a great investment property. Yeah, and knowing how to do it, and that's what Mike, you know, my mentor, really showed me how to do It's how to manage properties at a distance. I've never owned a property in Toronto. I've never owned, I owned one property in Brampton that was years ago. I live in Brampton, I rent, yeah. because it doesn't make sense. We've talked about this before. Yes. But touch on that for a second, because now people are looking at, you know, here's a real estate guru, a mentor, teaches, you know, a live to, uh, I don't know, thousands of people, um, and you actually rent. Talk a little bit about that. It's a personal choice. I don't think it's for everyone. I know it's important for some people to own, and other people, for me, especially when I started, I looked at it and I said, I can buy that house in Woodbridge, for $500,000, I'm gonna have to put up 100 grand, which I didn't have, but if I did, I'd put up 100 grand to get in that property, and then I'm tying up that working capital for what return? Yeah. Five, six percent a year? Yeah. Or I can put that into buying four or five other duplexes? So when I started, that was one thing. Now, I mean, I probably live in a $1.2, $1 $1.3 million home. Yeah. That you rent. That I rent. Yeah. But if I'm self employed, if I wanna buy that place, yeah. I wanna put up three or $400,000, which right. you could. You know, but now my carrying cost every month, is gonna be five, six thousand dollars. I can rent the thing for thirty four hundred. Yeah. Why would I spend more? Because I'm gonna get the investment? Yeah. No, that's not a better investment for me than a one point two million dollar building that I can buy and have 20 units and have... Well, I mean, you just said it, right? I started off the show and say, said, Ray, um, Ray, what do you invest in? You say, well, Rav, I can teach people how. It might sound a little, little astronomical, but you won't look at anything unless you feel like you can get a 30% annualized return. Right. So if you're going to buy that million dollar property and put $300,000 down, you can take that $300,000 and make 30% on it. You can make $90,000 yep. and pay how much in rent in a, in a year? What am I paying? Year three... 36? Yeah, so you can pay 40 grand in rent and make 90, so you have a margin of $50,000, Yeah. you know? Um, and that's and not even counting the renovations you're gonna wanna do because it's your own home, Yeah. you know, the... Uh, Don't get me started because it's <laughs> gonna make people crazy, but there's a lot of disadvantages to owning. Yeah. You wanna break a mortgage. All your transaction costs when you wanna move and sell. Yeah. Now, there's also things that people want with their own home. They want a place to call their home. They want to do their own gardens. Don't tell my, my landlord, yeah. but we did the gardens. We just did them the way we wanted to. Like, yeah. I mean, you can do all those things in a rental, too. So yeah. for us, 
It works. And you're a great tenant. I mean, I don't think he's kicking you out, kicking you they out will never kick, They will not kick us out unless if there was a divorce and they yeah. needed to be able to liquidate a property to you know, settle something. But why would anyone who bought a property to rent it out ever kick out a tenant who actually could buy landscapes? The property. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, we do all the stuff on the property. So uh, it's pretty unlikely we're going to ever well, have... We're going to have to bring you back for another show so that you can, we can, do you some, can share topic. with them. I mean, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think if you have no capital then owning real estate is good to build your equity. But once you have a few hundred thousand dollars, yep. then it can make sense economically only, economically, yep. for you to rent and take the few hundred thousand dollars and go make 30% on that. Let's do a show on that. Because we I need think, to do a show on that. I think that well, there's an argument that can be made that if all you have is $100,000 yeah. and you think, hey, I need to buy the home first, I believe that's actually hamstringing you. Yeah. Because you could go out... If you just look at it economically. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. And uh, so you got to evaluate what your lifestyle choice is, and we could do a whole thing on that. It'd be fun. Let's yeah. do that sometime. Let's do okay, so um, let, let's move on really quickly to... We were talking, you, you, you showed me something um, a few months ago. I think it was in the Michigan area, yeah. an apartment building. Let's talk a little bit about numbers, you know, you know not exact per se, um, but what would something like... So, so Rav has... I don't know. Let's say you come to me and Rav has $100,000 to make, to make numbers easy. Yeah. How, how could something, what would be the return on investment? Talk to me about this specific project in, in, um, in Michigan. Sure. And, well, and just to be clear, you and I are friends. We've known each other of for course, years. So we talk about this stuff. It's yeah. not something I market publicly. No, 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 but no. But no. these, these types of investments, you know, we're seeing yield in and around the, the 10% range. Right now it's about 10.5% we're looking yeah. at on, on cash flow. Cash flow. Cash flow. Did I distribute to you? So I, if I'm putting, you know, 100k down on a property, I can enjoy um, just over uh, 10 know, grand a year. Or 10 grand a year. Yeah. 800 dollars, 800 plus dollars a month. Yep. Okay. And 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 I think the reason why we've had so much success and yeah. so much demand for these yeah. is if you're in Canada, how are you going to get that return right now when you're buying a property that just doesn't produce as much income per every dollar spent? Overall, yeah. So that's there's nothing magical I'm doing here. I'm just buying a better product. Yeah. No, no. This is great. I mean, this is ca the cash flow component of it. Yeah. Because there's some people out there that are going to do other things. Talk about the different kind of vehicles because somebody may not today want cash flow. Exactly. And they want to grow their money. So my investors and the people that I work with, yeah. they're pri they're primarily looking for yield. Yeah. They want cash flow every cash flow. year. Yeah. They're not as concerned about the long term. So you know, on these they give 10% yield, but they also have an equity stake. Yeah. So their overall returns projected pretty conservatively, work out to about 20% a year. They also have an equity stake. I do that. No, not all, no REITs don't necessarily do it that yeah. way. But so you're for, giving cash flow, but then you're also giving some money on the exit. Now, I do that because it's very attractive for the people that I've worked with, but I make a lot of money doing that as well. Like It's, it's a great, and, it's and a win-win. And we do that either by um, refinance or maybe even sell. That's correct. Usually we refinance because... If, if it's you and me, and yeah. I say, hey, in five years, why don't we sell this? You don't want the capital. No, it's you giving, want the income. It's spitting it out. Yeah. But I can take some of my $100,000 out. Exactly correct. Right? I love having you on the show. We've got to have you back for sure Great. to talk about some of the things that we talked about. Uh, appreciate you. Awesome. Appreciate you too, the viewers at home. Without you, we wouldn't have a show. For more information, go to theeverydayinvestor.info. Remember, when it comes to a money, you want to live simply. Uh, you want to give generously and always invest. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hey everyone, my name is Danny and this is my beautiful wife Jillian. Just like you, we want to have success in our life and our family, but also we want to make a difference in this world. A couple of years ago, with the encouragement and support of RAV, my husband decided to build uh, Oasis Home for Kids. It's a loving refuge for orphans and abandoned children in Haiti. I've been blown away by what's been done in the lives of these poor kids in such a short period of time. Haiti is the poorest country of our hemisphere and they need our help now. Indeed, Haiti's facing a serious humanitarian crisis. Many live in extreme poverty. More than 50% of the kids do not attend school and have no hope. Many orphans and abandoned kids can be found on the streets. How can you help? One dollar a day will make a big difference in the life of a child. 
With just $1 a day, we can provide quality education and a meal for that child who would have no chance otherwise to learn how to read and to write. A simple act of love is the most powerful answer to complex problems. I'm so grateful for Rav's support from the beginning. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Now, together, let's change the world. Learn more about our work by visiting our website. Thank you. Merci.